Hi, I'm Dr. Megan Saunders. By 2100, the sea level is predicted to be almost a meter higher than it is today. And this will have some really serious consequences for people who live in the coastal zone. But not only that, it will also change the distribution of coastal habitats, like mangrove forests, as shown behind me, and coral reefs and seagrasses, because these things live very close to the sea surface. These habitats also support high biodiversity and the livelihoods of hundreds of millions of people worldwide. So we're really concerned as to whether sea level rise will have negative impacts in these habitats. At the University of Queensland, we are developing computer models, which examine the response of coastal habitats to rising seas. I spoke with Professor Stuart Finn, who's a chief investigator on the Australia Sea Level Rise Project. So the objective of the Australian Sea Level Rise Project is to combine study of biological and physical changes in the environment to understand how sea level rise will affect the biology of the coast and marine areas as well as physical changes and to take that information and put it in a form that can be used to help with social and economic um, planning to help society adapt to sea level rise and change in the future. The development of um, policy and guidelines for sustainable use of the environment requires knowledge of how the environment changes, so understanding biology and physical parts of the environment, and those people then work with social and economic scientists to develop the policy for local, state and national governments. One of the projects we're working on looks at the effect of sea level rise on seagrass, which form vast undersea meadows. For this project, we first needed to collect information on where seagrass occurs in our study sites, which were various places in Queensland. To do this, we use remote sensing imagery, images taken from satellites, and we inform those images using field data, which we collect by snorkeling or scuba diving in the study sites. We also needed a digital elevation model. This is basically a map showing the water depth and height of the land in every location in our study area. To make these, we use satellite imagery from remote sensing as well as information from geographic positioning systems and nautical charts. We also need some information on the environmental conditions where the seagrass is living, such as the water clarity and wave height. Once we have all of these data sets together, we can then examine the relationships between where seagrass occurs and doesn't, and the environment in those places. We can then simulate the sea level rising and re-predict where we expect the environment to be suitable for seagrass in the future. This gives us a detailed map of a predicted future habitat of seagrass. The, the main findings of the study is that coastal habitats will change quite significantly and we will lose large portions of them, specifically seagrass, uh, because it can't grow where the water becomes too deep and then it can't colonise or re-establish in areas that are inundated because there's existing infrastructure and buildings there. Dr. Morena Mills is a conservation planner, and she uses the results of habitat distribution models for seagrass, mangroves, and coral reefs in her research. So my research is about understanding how coastal ecosystems will migrate in the future and how, where the best places for development will be in the future, so we can reconcile both ecosystem or conservation goals and development goals with rising seas. We can't stop the sea level from rising, but what our research has shown is that we can use the best scientific information to inform management plans for our coastal zones. And this can help ensure the best possible future for both human beings and the coastal habitats that we rely on.